Gilroy Gardens is one of the most beautiful theme parks I have ever visited. If you couldn't tell by the name, this place is jam-packed with gardens. For several years, this park was operated by Cedar Fair, but they recently and quietly stopped operating the park prior to the 2022 season. I didn't know that prior to my visit, so in this video, I'll review Gilroy Gardens and also explains what happens if you try to visit with a Platinum Pass now. Michael and Claudia Bonfante opened the Knob Hills Food Supermarket chain. They decided to sell their grocery store to fund an amusement park in the late 1970s. Over the course of 25 years, the Bonfante family slowly but surely built their dream park. From 1977 through 2000, the park went through three different names, and while it was closed to the public during this time, it served as a commercial plant nursery and also could be used as a recreational facility for employees of Knob Hills Foods. Then in 2001, Bonfante Gardens finally opened. While this park was undeniably beautiful, the park suffered from low attendance in its first few years. In 2003, Paramount Parks was contracted to manage the property. No movie themes were brought over, Paramount was just there to help the Bonfante family operate the park. I'm really glad that was the case because it would have ruined the natural feel of the park. In 2006, Cedar Fair purchased Paramount Parks, and in turn, they became the new managing party for the park, which was renamed Gilroy Gardens. Just two years later, the city of Gilroy, where the park is located, purchased the park from the Bonfante family. Cedar Fair would still operate the park, and it would remain that way through the 2021 season. At that point, Cedar Fair's contract to run the park expired, and the city of Gilroy quietly assumed operation of the park. I had no clue that it happened, so it was an interesting experience coming in with a Platinum Pass a few weeks ago. The park is still honoring Platinum Passes for the 2022 season, presumably because many people purchased these passes back in 2021 when Gilroy Gardens was still listed as an eligible park. These passes will not scan at the gate anymore, but the employees just spot check that you have a Platinum Pass and let you in. I imagine these passes will no longer be honored starting from 2023 onwards. Without a Platinum Pass, admission is quite pricey. It's $70 at the gate or $50 online plus an additional $20 to park. This is very steep if you only care about the coaster credits, but you need to remember that coaster enthusiasts are not this park's primary audience. The park caters to families and nature fans, and it does that quite well. From the parking lot, you can barely see any of the park. Between the lack of tall rides and the abundance of trees, that really isn't too surprising. Once inside, it is impossible not to be wowed by this park's beauty. You have multiple creeks running through the park, you have trees everywhere, and we have visited on a day when it was over 100 degrees outside, yet it felt like it was just 80 degrees because of how much shade this park offered. And some of the trees are pretty unique too, like the four-legged giant and the park's famous circus trees, which basically look like Swiss cheese. Then there are tons of flower gardens, some along the midway, some are built adjacent to rides, and others have their own little area. Just make sure to bring Claritin if you have any plant allergies. One of my friends and a few other guests we spoke with were sneezing non-stop from all the allergens at this park. You could spend a whole day here just taking in this park's natural beauty. The park doesn't feel like your traditional amusement park in many areas, and the whole place has a laid-back feel to it. This is not a park you need to, nor should you rush through. The employees at this park were very friendly, especially those working the rides. The only issue we encountered understandably was that many employees at shops and dining locations did not know what a Platinum Pass was. A supervisor often had to be contacted to authorize the discounts. The park apparently owns 536 acres, but the park itself is fairly compact at this time. The layout forms a loop around a central lake, and if you want to go around faster, the park offers a train that takes you from one side of the park to the other in short order. We visited this park on Labor Day weekend, which should have been one of the busiest days of the year, yet lines were mostly non-existent. Both coasters were total walk-ons, as were most flat rides. Only two rides had weights from what we could see. The South County Backroads Antique Car Ride had a modest weight, and the paddle boats appeared to have a sizable weight due to its comically low capacity. If you want to ride this attraction, I would head there immediately after the park opens. I saw some reviews online saying this line could take 1-2 to two hours some days. If lines are bad, the park does still offer Fastlane. 
It costs $30 and allows you to go up the exit of the rides on the dry side as often as you please. It does not work for the Water Oasis water park area though. Speaking of which, that was the one section of the park that looked to be really busy during our visit, which makes sense given the heat wave. This area had some water play structures and spray grounds for kids. There really wasn't anything in this section for adults though. The dry side is filled with family rides. There is a deep collection of observation rides. It just depends what mode of transit you prefer, but they all offer stunning views of the park's gardens. Sky Trail Monorail was unfortunately closed for my visit, but that went through the Monarch Garden. Bonfante Railroad also brings you through this garden while also taking you around the perimeter of the park. The Rainbow Gardens Round Boat Boat Ride brings you through, you guessed it, Rainbow Gardens. The paddle boats go out on the central lake and the view of the mountains in the distance is gorgeous. Then the panoramic wheel is the park's tallest attraction at 5 stories tall and it offers the lone aerial views of the park. The park's other flats aren't notable as individual rides, rather I like how many of them are themed to look like food. You have the artichoke dip kitty roundabout, then you have two rides themed to ice cream with the strawberry sundae kitty swings and the banana split swinging ship. Then there's also the Mushroom Swing Wave Swinger and the Garlic Twirl Teacup Ride. I cannot say I've ever seen these themes elsewhere, but they certainly brought a smile to my face and made the park feel unique. Lastly, you have two roller coasters. Quicksilver Express is the park's largest coaster by far. This Morgan Mine Train has a secluded layout down a hill. These visuals and the ride's smoothness make it a great fit for all ages. The first half is pretty tame but the second half has some laterals and positive G's towards the start. I have an entire review in this coaster, but it is an above average mine train. Timber Twister is a medium zier Tivoli. The ride gives two laps and if you're in the back, you'll get some laterals on the initial drop as the super long train is pulled down it. Beyond the rides and gardens, the park also has some seasonal events. They're most notable for their holiday lights event in the winter. I haven't visited it, but I imagine the park looks even more beautiful than usual. Lastly, I want to touch on this park's food. Make sure to get the garlic fries. If you're unaware, Gilroy is basically the garlic capital of the world, and this is a local delicacy. They're pricey, but they're very good. So do I recommend Gilroy Gardens? It depends. If you only care about coaster credits and nothing else, I don't think this place is worth it once the Platinum Pass no longer works. Quicksilver Express is fun, but it's not worth the cost of admission alone. However, this place is a must if you love landscaping and beautiful theme parks. The landscaping is among the best of any park. We spent three hours here, mostly admiring all the trees and flowers. I think this is the best park in Northern California for kids and families. This park clearly caters to this audience with their ride offerings and the limited lines make it perfect for them. There's enough to keep kids busy for a day especially if they spend time over at the water park. For this demographic, I think the price is worth it. So those are my thoughts on Gilroy Gardens. What are your thoughts on this former Cedar Fair Park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.